Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll talk about RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, and how to implement it in Microsoft Fabric. I'm using the Synapse ML tutorial as an inspiration for this video. However, I could not get this tutorial to work out of the box, and I had to make some changes to the code. So in the description of this video, I will post the link to this tutorial, and I will also post the link to my blog, where you could see the updated cells updated Python to make this architecture working. If you're watching this video, you're probably A, a data engineer or BI professional who's trying to understand what is RAG, is it important? Or B, you've tried to implement RAG on your own using the tutorials and example that you found online and that did not work. So this video will provide answers and background for both use cases. First, what is RAG and why do we need it? Well, we need it because out of the box, LLMs that are available to us, for example, ChatGPT, if you try to ask a question for ChatGPT, who is the current Republican or Democratic Party nominee for the upcoming 2024 election, ChatGPT will not be able to answer this question because its data was limited to, I think, April of 2023. So it does not have any information about what's happened, what happened since. So when you connect in your code to ChatGPT or some of the other LLM Gen AI models, then you're basically getting a read-only version of those models. What happens if I would like them to answer questions based on information that's available only in my company, only in my enterprise? What if I wanted to provide my own data that would like LLMs to draw answers to my questions from? Well, that's exactly the scenario that RAG RAG architecture allows us to satisfy. It allows us to use our LLM models to answer questions on data that it was not trained on. So let's look at a specific scenario. At Prohabits, one of my companies, we work very heavily with employee campaigns and we have a lot of IP on how to run those campaigns efficiently in order to achieve business outcomes. However, if I ask of a generic LLM, what is an employee campaign? I'm gonna get a very generic answer. If I'm gonna ask LLM the same question based on the data that I provide from Prohabits, we're gonna get a very different answer. So a generic model says employee campaign is a program that encourages employee participation and enthusiasm. Whereas if I ask the same question to the model that has access to my company data, I get a lot more detailed and a lot more relevant answer. Now we'll be going through the Python code a little bit later in the video and trying to understand how exactly everything works. Let's just take a look at the high level flow. So at the high level, the way reg works is the following. First, we connect to the folder that houses all of our PDF documents, all of our knowledge. Then we read those documents and we convert words and paragraphs into what's called embeddings or a digital numeric representations of the words. Then those embeddings are stored in a database that allows me to search. So that database here is called a vector database. Then once that's accomplished, I can take my answer, which my answer will also come in the way of words. So then I have to take my words and create embeddings out of those words. So basically convert words into numbers. I will run that embedded questions or questions turn into embeddings into my vector database which will then retrieve a relevant context or information in the documents that's relevant to the question I'm trying to ask. I'm gonna then pass that question to my LLM model as well as the retrieve context so that my quote unquote read-only model can take the question, can take the context that I'm providing to it, retrieve the relevant information and provide the generated answer back to me. Now on data, that is specific and relevant to the question I'm asking that it was not trained on initially. Now let's take a look specifically at what needs to happen for me to convert my files, my documents into the embeddings in the vector database. So that's just a little bit more details to what, what, what was happening in the prior slide. So what we do is again, we read everything from the document folder. Then we use an Azure technology called document intelligence to chunk the document and prepare it to create our embeddings. Then we're gonna create, we're gonna use another LLM model that's specifically designed to create embeddings to take the chunks and convert it into the digital format or into numbers. And then those numbers will be stored in, a, in an Azure AI search database or in an 
uh, it's actually called an index. So the whole process that we have to follow is read documents, chunk documents, create embeddings, store them in the vector database. Once they're in the vector database, we can run queries on top of the database to retrieve relevant information and pass it along to our LLM. Now let's look at the bill of materials or everything that we have to have configured before we can even try to implement them in Microsoft Fabric. So the first thing that we need is we need Microsoft Fabric Workspace. Then we need to have a notebook and a lake house created in that workspace. We then need to configure and create Azure OpenAI service. We need to add two deployments. The first deployment is to create our embeddings. It's called Text Embeddings ADA002. And then we need to create another deployment for the model that will actually be answering our questions. In our case, I'm using GPT-35 Turbo. Those deployments, once they've created and once the service is configured, it will create an endpoint and we can then generate our keys. And then we will take those keys and we'll save them into Azure Key Vault as a secret. In order for me to save it in a Key Vault, I need to have Azure Key Vault configured. And in order for Power BI and Fabric to, to be able to read from this Key Vault, you need to give read permission to the Power BI service in Azure. The next one is we have to create Azure AI Document Intelligence. That's the service that will help us chunk our documents and prepare them for embeddings. So we do the same with keys and for this service and we store it in Azure Key Vault. And lastly, we configure and set up Azure AI Search and store the keys in Azure Key Vault. Now, if you wanna follow this tutorial, the good news is there is a free level of service for Azure AI Document Intelligence and Azure AI Search. They come with limited capacity capabilities, but it's gonna be good enough for our tutorial. And now we're actually gonna go through the notebook and I'm not gonna to spend too much time going through this because A, you could look at the Microsoft notebook. There is pretty good instructions there and I don't want this video to take forever. So I will just highlight the salient points in the notebooks. And again, look for the links in the description of this video. The most important thing is to actually get the Synapse ML library to work in Fabric. Out of the box, Synapse ML library is packaged within Fabric. However, it does not work very well, at least not as of the time I'm recording this video. So we'll actually have to cut and paste this code here in order to make sure that you're running the latest and the good version of Synapse ML. The next piece is to configure all of the setup variables. So you have to provide the secret information or key information for document intelligence, for open AI service, and also for the AI search name. Uh, we need to specify which model we'll be using for embeddings, which model we'll be using for answering our questions. We also need to provide the service name. When you work with Synapse ML, when it's asking for service name, it's not asking for the endpoint, it's asking just for the portion of the endpoint. And then you need to have, uh, again, uh, all of the keys available as well as for the index database, it's gonna ask you what will be the name of the index in which we'll save our vector information. Okay, in this step, what we do is we create an a data frame, and then we're gonna load all of our relevant files from the folder in the lake house into the data frame. So this is how the process starts. Once this is run, all of our PDFs that we're trying to learn from are loaded into the, da into the data frame. Here I display the data frame. You could see the path to the file, modification, length, and also the content. Now in this cell, we're actually using our document intelligence to connect to our data frame, analyze the document. Now we're using Azure Document Intelligence to effectively add two more columns to our data frame. One of those columns will contain the content of the documents and the other column will actually have the bunch of paragraphs. So now you could drill in and see how it broke our, our document into a bunch of paragraphs. The next step is actually to convert, to keep adding to our data frame. And now we're actually creating the chunks. So now we're splitting further the documents into chunks. And then we actually can look at all of the chunks, but then eventually we get to the point of the process where we're taking our documents and we convert them into embeddings. So let's take a look what the embedded representation of our document actually looks like. So let me click on some of these embeddings, drill in, 
and you see a bunch of numbers. So these are the numbers that represent the words and the paragraphs in our document. The next step is we continue to enhancing our embeddings data frame to make it ready to populate our vector database. And eventually in this line of code, we're using Synapse ML to actually take our embeddings data frame and write it back into the Azure AI search so that it's available for us in subsequent brag scenarios. So at this point of our process, we've read our documents from the folder, we process them, we chunk them, we generated embeddings and we written, we've written those embeddings back into the vector database. Now that our documents live in the vector database, we can get ready to start asking our questions. So the first step is we have to write a function that will take the question and convert it into embeddings as well, because our questions has to be converted into numbers so that we can run the query in the vector database. And that is exactly what gen question embedding function does. The next function that we need to write is the function that will take the question in the form of embeddings and actually retrieve the relevant portions from the document that are that make sense to be in the context of the question that we're asking. And the last piece in order for us to enable asking questions to our vector database is the function get context. So this function takes the question, uh, converts it into the embedding, then it goes to our vector database, retrieves the relevant information, and then it creates the context from the output. And now we're ready to put it back, to put it all this effort to work. So the way we're gonna do that is by a function get response. So this function, function is what puts it all together. It takes my user question, in my case, it's gonna be, what is an employee campaign? So, and we're gonna do this in the form of the prompt. So we're gonna create a prompt just like, much like what you do in ChatGPT, you create prompts. So what you do is you form your prompt in a certain way. You say, hey, first I'm gonna specify the context. And that context comes from our get context function that takes the question and returns back relevant information from the vector database. So that's gonna come in here. And then we're giving it a request answer the question based on the context above. And if information is not present, then just say, I don't know. Then we use OpenAI chat completion to take our prompt, execute it, and generate the result back. So here, what we're doing is we say, hey, get response on the question of what is an employee campaign and put the answers in the response variable. And at the very last step, we're actually printing the response and we see that the response is pulling from the document that we provided an employee campaign is a well-defined and limited initiative aimed to achieve a specific objective, blah, blah, blah. So this comes straight from the document that we stored in our vector database. Okay, now let's summarize. What did we have to do to get that notebook and to implement reg architecture in Fabric? First, we had to fix and make sure that the version of Synapse ML library is the correct one. Then we're using Synapse ML library to retrieve the keys and to do a lot of heavy lifting for us. We also use Azure Document Intelligence to help us pre-process the documents. Then we use the OpenAI functionality to create embeddings from our documents. We store them into AI search engine within Azure in the form of an index that actually is a vector database. Then we wrote a couple of functions to convert our questions into embeddings. Then we wrote a function to take our question, look it up into our knowledge base, into our vector database, and bring the relevant context back. Then we use the prompt and uh, open AI, uh, open AI chat completion to, to create a prompt and use our question to response, to create a response with the relevant answer. Again, all of the links will be posted in the description of this video. If you found this video useful, if you enjoyed it, then we would really appreciate like and subscribe. Thank you for stopping by and we're hoping to see you back soon for the next one.